Buffalo Nickel remains one of the more popular 20th century coin series to emanate from the US Mint. Originally introduced in 1913, the coin became a bit of a pet project for Secretary of the Treasury Franklin McVeigh, who wished to see former President Theodore Roosevelt's vision for a more classical US coins come to light. McVeigh effectively shunned US Mint chief engraver Charles Barber and appointed James O. Frazier to design the new coin instead, which would replace Barber's very conservative V-nickel design. Frazier would go on to become best known for his sculptures and national monuments both in Washington and around the country. Frazier's design was bold and distinctively American, featuring a portrait of an American bison on the reverse and a profile image of a Native American man on the obverse. The obverse design is said to have been a composite image of three Native American chiefs who have posed for Frazier years prior. These are said to have been the war chief of the Kiowa Big Tree, the Lakota chief Iron Tail, and the Cheyenne chief two moons. Whether it was personal or professional, James Barber never really liked the design. However, his objections were largely ignored and on March the 4th, 1913, the first coins were presented to President Howard Taft and 33 Indian chiefs at the groundbreaking ceremony for what was meant to become the National Memorial to the North American Indian at Fort Wadesworth in Staten Island, New York. The coin would be minted continuously until 1938 at Philadelphia, San Francisco and Denver Mints, producing over 60 issues over those years, not including numerous varieties and over 1.2 billion coins would enter circulation. In this special presentation, the World Numismatic News presents to you the top 10 low mintage buffalo nickels and what they may be worth. Just a quick note on the methodology used to compile this list before we dive in. Only official mintage figures from the US Mint are used and prices stated are based on current market conditions and auction results from within the past five years or so as anything older may no longer strictly speaking be relevant. In the number 10 position we come across the 1914D Buffalo Nickel at a mintage of 3,912,000 coins, a semi-key date that suffers greatly from wear and is typically found either in low mint state or lower circulating grades. Most coins are fairly well struck for the series, although by no means perfect. The coin is seen from around $50 for a filler grade coin and around $200 for a coin where the date is at least legible. Mint state coins typically trade hands from around $1,000, while in 2012 a PCGS graded MS67 coin was sold at auction for $23,000. $500. Moving ahead quickly to the number 9 position, we again encounter a 1914 coin, but this time it is the San Francisco Mint's turn at the helm. The 1914S Buffalo Nickel saw a mintage of 3,470,000 coins struck. Despite having a lower mintage than its Denver counterpart, the coin is more easily obtainable, at least in circulating grades. The coin was very inconsistently struck, and several examples suffer from so-called chin whiskers, which are the result of die clash marks on the obverse. Low-grade examples can be found from around $10, and most mint state coins see prices of between $250 and $500 each. Of course, as always, gem coins will see a premium imposed on them, as with this MS66 Plus graded coin from PCGS that sold in 2017 for $14,100 at auction. Next in line is the 1927S Buffalo Nickel coin with a total mintage of 3,430,000 coins. Soft strikes again plague this issue and finding a truly problem-free coin in a higher grade is a challenge all unto itself, compounded only by the fact that most dies at the San Francisco Mint were excessively polished to eradicate clash marks and signs of overuse. Lower grade coins though can again be found from around $10 each, while mint state examples can easily see prices of between $2,000 and $3,000 per coin. In 2016, a PCGS graded example at a grade of MS65 
five realized the price of $9,400 at auction. The number seven position in this list is the first of two entries from the coin's debut year. The 1913S Type 1 nickel has a recorded mintage of 2,105,000 coins, which is also the lowest mintage for any Type 1 coin. The 1913 Type 1 nickel features James L. Frazier's original design, where the denomination appears on a raised mound below the bison's feet. This feature suffered greatly from wear though and forced the mint to make minor design alterations only a few months into production. This led to the existence of the Type 1 and Type 2 coins today. Lower grade coins see prices of around $50 each while mint state graded coins sell for up to $600 per coin with gem examples beginning at a thousand dollars each. In 2013, a PCGS graded MS67 piece was sold for $8,812. The sixth slot is filled by the 1921S issue of a mintage of only 1,557,000 coins, most of which were minted early in the year before nickel production was halted entirely with no coins struck at all for 1922. This coin is mostly seen in low to mid circulating grades, with most mint state coins being quite rare. Interesting fact about this issue is the fact that the master die for the obverse was sharpened by hand, but no such action was taken for the reverse of the coin. And to compound the issue, most reverse dies were simply carried over from the previous year, allowing for coins with crisp details on the obverse and soft details on the reverse. Low-grade coins can be found from around $100 with filler-grade coins for even less. Mint-state coins are conditionally rare, and even coins in grades of AU can sell for $2,000 or more. In 2014, a gem MS66 graded coin from PCGS was sold at auction for a very handsome $19,975. At the halfway point on this list, we encounter the 1915S issue for the series. The coin saw a mintage of 1,505,000. While unusually well struck in general, the coin is difficult to obtain in higher circulating grades, mostly found in weaker grades for around $100 upwards, and mint state coins are seldomly seen and sell for several thousand dollars each when they surface. So it was no surprise when in December of 2015 a PCGS graded example at a grade of MS65 was sold for $5,170 at auction. Barely managing to sneak past the halfway mark at a mintage of 1,437,000 coins is the 1924 Buffalo Nickel from the San Francisco Mint. Now this coin is difficult to obtain in all grades, but truly rare in mint state conditions, with the vast majority of surviving examples existing at a grade of VF35 or below. The coin can generally be obtained from around $100 each, while prices do escalate very quickly as the coin's grade rises. In 2017, an NGC graded coin with a notably sharp strike and a grade of MS65 was sold at auction for $16,450. The third position belongs to probably the most sought-after coin in the entire series, the 1913S Type 2 Buffalo Nickel, with a meagre mintage of only 1,290,000 coins. With this coin, Charles Barber finally got his chance to put his stamp on James L. Frazier's design. He removed the mount from the base on the reverse in order to protect the denomination, but oddly left the date on the obverse unaltered, much to the frustration of coin collectors in decades to come. Unfortunately, he wasn't satisfied with that and continued to smooth out the fields and remove a good amount of detail from the rest of the design as well. The coin is extremely prized in all conditions so long as the date is legible and unfortunately suffers heavily from counterfeits 
as a result. So a graded coin is strongly advised when adding one to your collection. Even in the lowest of grades, the coin easily demands $300 upwards, with immense state coins selling for $1,000 at a bare minimum. In January of 2014, a PCGS graded example at a grade of MS66 Plus was sold for $18,000. $1,800 at auction. Standing second to last is the 1931 S Nickel with a mintage of 1,200,000 coins. The Great Depression had all but obliterated demand for the denomination. In fact, until November of 1931, only 194 thousand nickels were struck at San Francisco. At the behest of mint director Mary O'Reilly, dime production was halted in favor for striking nickels for the remaining weeks of the year. The coin was not actually released into circulation until 1935, at which time gem specimens were being hoarded by dealers and collectors. As a result, today the coin is actually rather easy to obtain in mint state conditions, but far more difficult to obtain in circulating grades, effectively subduing the coin's value compared to much higher mintage issues. Circulating grade coins can be obtained from as little as $15, while even mint state examples can be found from around $250 onwards. Sharply struck coins are always more highly priced though, and in 2015, one of the finest known examples at a grade of MS67 from PCGS was sold at auction for $29,492. At a mintage of 970,000 coins, the 1926 S Buffalo Nickel is the lowest mintage coin in the series, and varieties notwithstanding, the absolute key date as well. Almost the entire issue was immediately released into circulation, and the coin is genuinely rare in mint state conditions. Like the 1913 coins, counterfeiting is a problem, especially in higher grades. So be sure to keep that in mind if you discover a bargain. The coin can be found from around $100 in lower grades, while mint state coins are almost unheard of for less than $5,000 each. In 2014, a coin graded by PCGS at MS65 was sold at auction for $94,000. This has been a World Numismatic News special presentation taking a look at the top 10 low mintage buffalo nickels and how much they are worth. If you liked this video then be sure to have a look at the rest of our top 10 low mintage videos as well including Lincoln Pennies and Jefferson Nickels to name a few. Remember to stay subscribed to WNN and activate notifications by pressing the notification bell to know when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching, keep collecting and have a great day.